everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid-Michigan. And today I'm going to be standing behind the camera and we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the shrubs that I think you really should consider to have in your garden for some beautiful fall color. And <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I have recently gotten the COVID and am recovering a bit from it. So hopefully we'll make it through this video without any problems. Um, but I just wanted to start with this shrub. This is the Seven Sun flower. It's also called Tian Shan. And the Tian Shan is a native to the mountains of China. And it does not flower until now, late in the summer, early fall, but it's absolutely gorgeous and it has a wonderful scent to it. It's almost hydrangea-like in the way that it has blooms, but they're very small and every single one of them is a fertile bloom. And if you can see, there are bees all over it. So right now it is white, but after the flowers bloom, they will put out these beautiful maroon colored at least I would call them maroon colored um, little spikes from each of the blooms and that will keep color for even longer. And then to further the seasonal interest, this Tian Shan shrub has beautiful ornamental bark. It's peeling, it's green, it's tan, it's multicolored. So much going on with this shrub. You don't see this a lot. Uh, this one is by First Editions, and there is a version that is also by Proven Winners, which is called Temple of Bloom. I'm not sure the actual differences between the two, but I can tell you that this one is hardy down to zone five, and it's good through heat zone nine. And it has these beautiful curving leaves that look like paper chains and uh, just gorgeous. Again, it's, it's got these fragrant creamy white flowers. It's great for pollinators. And then again, that seasonal interest just extends right down into the winter season. This grows about 12 feet tall at the most and five to seven feet wide and I'm going to be growing this as a small tree form because it does really well that way and I do enjoy small tree farm forms. It does like full sun to part shade and it gets full sun in my garden. You can see I have two of them in the half moon garden here, one on this side and one on the other side and they do provide a very nice bright pop this time of year. Next up we're going to talk about the Candy Coral Berry. This is a Symphocarpus and it is absolutely gorgeous because while it has very small flowers during the summer, they turn into these beautiful light pink berries that look just like candy. Now they're not edible for us but they ripen in the early fall and then they become perfect food for the birds during the winter and they really do enjoy them so they're just starting to come into their mature color right now and I think they're simply stunning. These stay rather small they only get about two and a half feet tall by about two and a half feet or three feet wide and these are in full sun and they do really nicely also in arrangements if you like to do flower arrangements. And I have one on the other side of the shed as well, which has some many berries that are also just popping and becoming beautifully light pink. And there's going to be more and more of those that are maturing right now. This is hardy down to zone four and it goes up to zone nine. One of the shrubs that is at the top of my list is this beautiful Father Gilla. And this one is called Mount Airy. 
And I would highly recommend Mount Airy Fathergilla to anyone because it has really nice thick leaves and they look absolutely stunning in the fall. They take on a brilliant orange and red color and they have beautiful blooms also in the springtime that look like little bottle brushes. That's also the common name for this, which is a bottle brush. And they do have a really nice, sweet, almost honey-like fragrance. And this one doesn't get too big, but it does get about five feet tall by five feet wide. So I'm looking forward to it really filling in this space here. And the nice thing about the Mount Airy Fathergilla is that it can take full sun, but it also can go in part sun or part shade. Obviously the color will be much more rich the more sun that it gets. So uh, because this is part sun, I'm not sure how colorful it will get this fall, but last fall it looked absolutely stunning. This is Hardy down to zone five and again it does well in sun to part sun. It can be a little bit challenging to find these so check with your local nursery or even online is a good place to get them. A small native shrub that does really well in fall is this aronia and this one is called groundhog and I think it's aptly named as groundhog because it stays right along the ground and does not get very big and this is a native it does like moist soil, so it would probably be even healthier if it had those, but it's got uh, pretty white flowers on it in the springtime. And then in the fall, the colors are simply orange and just beautiful, like the quintessential colors of fall. And it's Aronia melanocarpa, and it actually will put on some berries as well. And it just does a really good job of being a ground cover. So if you need a tough ground cover that can go in full sun or part shade, this one is ideal because it stays only 14 inches tall and it can grow up to three feet wide. So really beautiful, uh, nice little dainty flowers in the spring as I said. It really doesn't need much pruning at all. No deadheading, nothing like that. And it just does really well. It's very easy care. This one is by Proven Winners, and you can often find this one in big box stores. Another small shrub that does really well in the fall is this Superstar Spirea here. Now, this Superstar Spirea is a blooming, a reblooming plant, and its foliage will turn kind of a maroonish purple color in the fall, or kind of burgundy. It's actually beautiful and it has pink blossoms most of the year. It, it reblooms and just the three season appeal is great. So I highly recommend it. Definitely would consider it maybe a bronze color when it turns in the fall and it takes full sun exposure. It gets about three feet tall by four feet wide. As you can see, it stayed a little bit smaller than that for me so far but I'm hoping it will actually get a skosh bigger and uh, fill out this space even more. Really, really easy care. This one is also incredibly hardy. It is hardy down to zone three and it goes up to heat zone eight. And Superstar Spirea is a first editions plant that uh, I got at Lowe's. Now viburnums are often underutilized, I think, in places because some of them can get rather large. But this opening act double file viburnum is a beauty. I love the texture of the leaves. They have nice deep veining. They also grow in a fashion that the branches have somewhat of an arching habit. So that growth pattern is really desirable to me. And then you'll see that the leaves turn this very deep burgundy, almost purple color in the fall. I just love it. And these do have baseball sized flowers, which is why it's called opening day. And it blooms in the springtime. So just a very, very beautiful plant. This one goes really well in full sun to part shade. And it is hardy all the way down to zone five and is good up to zone eight. For heat. Now this one gets a little bigger. This one gets six to eight feet tall and wide, but you can prune to size and shape somewhat. 
so keep that in mind but I have really enjoyed this plant so far and I actually got a second one because I love it so much and again the the burgundy foliage on it is just gorgeous and just look at the serration and veining on those leaves something about them just is very stunning to me now here we have another type of viburnum this is the blue muffin viburnum and it's absolutely been a really nice plant for me you can see I do get some deer activity we just sprayed again because they came in and nipped the tops off so they tend to keep these trimmed for me and keep them from getting too large these do have blooms beautiful pink or excuse me beautiful white blooms in the springtime and those blooms can turn into gorgeous deep blue berries and um, these are really good in sun or part shade and they can grow up to seven feet tall and wide so so far they've stayed rather compact I would say they're about five feet tall and some of that I do believe is due to the deer munching um, but that fall fruit is a beautiful uh, blue color if it remains but they have been eaten and then in addition to that it does get a nice color in the fall the viburnums really do provide several seasons of interest so here we have the grow though fragrant sumac this is absolutely beautiful now you might think this is a plain jane plant but i love the shape of the foliage on this. I think the leaves and the veining in it is gorgeous. And then they have these little itty bitty teeny pine cones that they have on them that they get. I don't know, they look like pine cones anyways. And that they get after they have their little bloom, <clears throat> their little bloom. And these are really awesome as a ground cover or a low hedge because they're good very much so in the drought they have done excellent they grow about two feet high and then six to eight feet wide so again a really nice low hedge they get beautiful in the fall the color is just fantastic now these are very hardy as well these are hardy down to a zone three and they don't have a heat zone on them so I'm sorry about that but uh, they look like they just would do well in just about any climate because of how well they do in the drought this summer you can see they never turned brown they never flopped they just looked stunning this whole summer and now they're looking good still and they're gonna put on some fall color for me and I'm gonna love it now if you have a small garden a shrub that you might enjoy is the Yuki cherry blossom dutsia you can see this one's already starting to put on some of its fall color and it gets that kind of burgundy purple color as well and I just love it so this was something that I picked up and you can actually divide these just like a regular perennial plant over time and this grows really well in Sun to part shade and these are good in zones 5 to 8 I do find that they tend to do better with more moisture if they're in the sun and they do fine in the part shade if they have a little less moisture so just a tip there these do grow about two feet tall and wide so not very big um, I find that they look a little bit wider than they do tall but I think that just depends and they have beautiful blossoms in the springtime so a lot of people buy them for that but again they have this beautiful shape to them this nice branching arching branching habit and then the beautiful fall color so good three season interest shrub now I'm just going to take a minute to mention the nine bark because I have several different varieties of them this one here is the little devil nine bark and this one just looks good all year round and I'd say the same about the other ones that I have summer wine nine bark fireside nine bark autumn jubilee nine bark so there's so many different varieties and so many different sizes and they are a plant that is native and actually this one has little bloom on it right now you can see they bloom in the spring they do have a beautiful arching habit after they put on their new growth comes out upright and then the next year it kind of falls over and arches so this one's coming through these two arborvitas very beautifully 
and it just has this really deep rich texture and color that it brings to the garden. So they're definitely lots of different sizes. They do air a little bit on the larger side. There are some that are called tiny wine nine bark. Those are probably the smallest ones that you can look for, but they're also very hardy. I believe almost all of them are hardy down to a zone three and they go up to a zone nine. So excellent, excellent plant. They do well in part shade to full sun. I really can't do a video about shrubs for fall color without talking about this perennial hibiscus. Now it's not really a shrub technically, it's a herbaceous perennial because it dies back to the ground every year, but it gets so large it might as well be a shrub. These grow about uh, four or five feet tall and wide and they're hardy down to zone five up to zone nine and they have beautiful flowers on them and they have gorgeous foliage all season whether it's green or like this one a very black. And this one is called the Evening Rose Hibiscus. And what's so awesome about this is that it will put magnificent fall color on as well. So a lot of people don't think about hibiscus when they think about fall color. They simply think about these glorious blooms. And the blooms are amazing, but wow, the color is stunning. You will be amazed. Now, of course, I would also be remiss if I didn't at least give an honorable mention to the hydrangea. The panicle hydrangeas put on beautiful floral show during the late summer and they turn into fall colors whether it's a nice limey pink or a deep pink and they have so many different sizes and varieties i'm not going to talk about them all today but i do just want to give a shout out to these wonderful panicle hydrangeas that have several seasons of interest that we can enjoy well, I hope today's video was interesting and you learned a little bit about some shrubs that could bring you some beautiful color this fall. I certainly recommend all of them. I'm sure there's plenty of others that I haven't mentioned, but those are the ones that I really enjoy in my landscape. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below about those that you have found really amazing for you, uh, what zone you're in and why you think that it's a, such a great color. Like, is it red? Is it purple? What kind of color is it adding to your landscape that makes it really beautiful for autumn? Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you next time. Bye.